Abby with Better World Books coming to you today from Lilith Fair in Minneapolis. I'm joined today by uh, Books for Africa. I'm here with Sarah. She's the Director of Development. Sarah, thank you so much for being here. Thanks. Thanks for inviting me. Absolutely. We're so happy to have you. I'm going to ask Sarah just a few questions today. Um, so for those of you who are watching and don't know anything about Books for Africa or maybe have just heard about them but aren't sure exactly the programs, can you just tell them about your organization and what you guys are trying to do? Sure. I'd be happy to. Thank you. Um, Books for Africa has been around for 22 years. I know there are a lot of people who have not heard about us. We're kind of a little below the radar sometimes. But Books for Africa is the largest provider of English language text and library books to the continent of Africa. And we've been doing this for a long time. It's built up from our, our founder started this in 1988 after he had visited a library in Jinja, Uganda where um, he went to the library and asked, well, where are the books? And they showed him the books that were like four books that were locked up on the wall. And he thought, this is ridiculous because, you know, there are so many books in the U.S. here that people don't, you know, even think about it. I mean, there's so many excess books, really. And so he came back determined to help kind of balance that out. So he started by sending two mailbags to that library, and since then we've sent 22 million books to 45 countries, so that's a huge amount. Um, but we do this, too, by since we get books donated by publishers and businesses and individuals, we're able to send the books for a really cost-effective price. It's less than 50 cents a piece to get the books to Africa. So it makes the books affordable and accessible to some of these really kind of outlying rural areas that are in particular need for the books. So we've um, been working on our mission, which is to end the book famine in Africa, which for a lot of people, we really feel that's almost as important as the food famine, because if you can't get educated, you can't really progress so you can become self-sufficient in years to come. So it's, it's really a critical mission. So um, you guys have been with Better World Books, partnering with us for actually quite a few years now. I think you were even actually our very first nonprofit literacy partner. I think you're right. So <laughs> what what does this kind of partnership mean for your organization? Like, What have we been able to help you with? Better World Books has been an incredible partner. I mean, because of Better World Books, we've been able to like almost double our annual outlay of books that we can send to Africa every year. Because um, with Better World Books, it has, for one thing, you've been a, an incredible source of for post-secondary textbooks. I think you're our largest provider, and that's an area that's been a huge demand from Africa because they have a lot of universities that are developing over there. And so that's been incredible because I think Better World Books does book drives on, what, um, a thousand? Just, yeah, over a thousand. So that has provided a lot of text library books for us. Then we have also been able to get a lot of funding from you, from the books that you have sold online. And that, given the fact that it costs less than 50 cents a piece to send books, um, we've gotten several million dollars from Better World Books. So that, I mean, that translates to probably four million books that you can offer to send. So that is huge. You mentioned earlier that you guys have a fall conference coming up. Oh yes, thank you so, for mentioning yeah, that. Tell us a little bit about we that. We have, um, well, we're focusing this year on a fall conference, October 8th and 9th. Um, we are focusing on African literature. Uh, I think there are a lot of incredible writers coming out of Africa today. However, um, they aren't very well known by the mainstream American audience. So we're having this conference. We I have invited four. Um, really powerful, energetic voices from Africa to come here and share a little bit, do some meetings, um, sell and autograph their books, um, discuss some of the challenges of writing and publishing in Africa today. And so it'll be a great way for attendees to get introduced to some of these voices and um, hopefully they'll be encouraged to go out and buy more African authors. We're having um, someone from Somalia, Nuruddin Farah, we're having Alexander Fuller from South Africa, we're having um, someone from Kenya, um, Binyavanga Wainaina, and an Ethiopian, no, I'm sorry, a Nigerian author, who was um, Uem Akhan, who was, uh, one of his books was a pick from Oprah's Book Club, which is 
quite a, That's quite a distinction. Quite so a anyway, so we hope that you will go to our website, which is booksforafrica.org, and check out a little more about our conference because I think it's going to be an exciting event. Awesome. That's wonderful. Um, so, Better World Books is at Lilith Fair today. We're being sponsored by the I4C campaign. And they've been asking questions for the entire tour. In a better world, what do you foresee? So, if I can ask you, Sarah, in a better world, what does BFA foresee? Well, I think Books for Africa, the whole idea behind Books for Africa is, is creating a world where all people have access to educational opportunities. Because as I said earlier, if you can't get educated, then you won't ever be able to feed yourself or sustain yourself. And I think of all the talent that is on the continent of Africa and so many that don't have the opportunity to really access the education that can help them realize that talent. And so that's kind of what I what I foresee in the ideal world. Excellent. Literacy. Can't get enough literacy. Well, thank you so much for being with us, Sarah. It was so nice to meet you. Um, we're happy to have you here today. Hope you get to go enjoy some of the concerts. We've got a great lineup at Lilith Fair tonight. Well, and I want to point out, too, that since this is Minneapolis, and some of you may not believe this, but there's no snow on the ground. So I just want i want to make sure we get credit for that. So, yeah, it's a beautiful day. It's beautiful outside. So, All right. We'll sign up, and um, I'll see you next time in Indianapolis.